Drop Dead Beautiful. The three little words were scrawled on the Cartier card Lucky Sant'Angelo had just opened. Hand-delivered, the note had been brought up to the house in Bel Air by Philippe, her houseman, who discovered it in the mailbox at the end of the driveway. Drop Dead Beautiful. No signature, no return address. Was it an invitation to an upcoming event too clever for its own good? Whatever. One quick glance at the card, and Lucky tossed it in the trash. Lucky Sant'Angelo. A dangerously seductive woman with blacker-than-night eyes, full sensuous lips, a tangle of long jet-black hair, deep olive skin, and a lithe body. Wherever she went, Lucky still brought a room to a standstill, for not only was she wildly beautiful, she was also a powerhouse, a woman to be reckoned with, a force of nature. Street smart and forever savvy, Lucky Sant'Angelo had it all. Grabbing her purse from a shelf in the luxurious dressing room, Lucky headed for the door. Everything was luxurious in Bel Air, the privileged enclave of the very rich and the very famous. The house she and her husband Lenny were living in was a short-term rental. Recent storms had wreaked havoc on their home in Malibu, and they'd been forced to leave while repairs were being made. The beach was more her style. Bel Air was too cut off from real life. People existed as if they were living under siege, surrounded by multiple security guards and vicious attack dogs. That way of living was not for her. She enjoyed feeling unprotected and free, which was one of the reasons she'd opted out of running Panther Studios several years earlier. Being the head of a Hollywood studio was no nine-to-five job. She'd found herself working 17-hour days, leaving no time for family and friends. One morning, she'd woken up and thought, that's it, I'm out. So she'd quit running Panther, and after producing one movie, she'd sold the studio and gotten out of the film business altogether. Lenny was in the movie industry. That was enough for one family. Besides, Lucky had other plans. She was getting back into the hotel business in Vegas, the place that had all begun for her. Several years ago, she'd put together a syndicate of investors to develop a huge multi-billion dollar complex called The Keys. She'd been working with architects and planners for the last five years, and in less than a month, they were about to celebrate the grand opening. Mom! Max burst into the dressing room without knocking. Max, her 16-year-old wild child, tall and cult-like, with smooth olive skin, green eyes, an unruly tangle of black curls, and a killer bod. Max was a showstopper. Like, Mom, here's the thing, Max announced. There's no way I can go to Gino's party. You see, there's this big blowout for one of Cookie's friends up in Big Bear, and a whole crowd of us want to go, so, like, you know, I I, I can't let Cookie down. You are not missing Gino's birthday, Lucky said firmly. No way. Max stared balefully at her mom. Huh? You heard me, Lucky said, heading for the door. I, I, I can't believe you'd be this mean, Max complained, trailing behind her. It's not like he'll miss me. Of course he'll miss you, Lucky insisted, hurrying down the stairs. You're like so not, Max grumbled, right behind her. Lucky turned around, shooting her daughter a warning look. You're getting on my bad side, so stop it. But no, Max, Lucky said, walking out the front door. I'm not interested. Do not want to hear it. And with those words... She got into her red Ferrari and roared off down the driveway. Crap! Max shrieked as her mother's car vanished into the distance.